For me, our next presenter will be Taylor Nickin, a college trainee from Southern Methodist University. The second source of variability is introduced through the blind movement of the probe. 
For example, if we wish to investigate the right side of the lung, specifically airway RV7, the bronchoscope will continue to move distally in the airways until it can. At this point, the probe will continue to advance into the smaller airway, and this is when the area of chance, chance and the source of variability is introduced, as there is no way for us to determine whether it continues to move in the right branch of the airway or in the left branch of the airway. This is the 3D airway reconstruction that I was referring to that is taken during the five centimeter pullback of that probe, and it allows us to see a clear picture from the proximal to the peripheral region of the small airway, during which there's also branches that are identified with the numbers. In the past, my lab has focused on determining the scan and scan insertion reproducibility for identifying and evaluating the same airway path, as well as the propensity for the greater reproducibility in certain lung regions to help guide future longitudinal studies. And overall, they found that the right middle lung has the highest percentage for the insertion, scan, rescan reproducibility, with a percentage of 81%. Once we understand the observer and the technique variability introduced to this method, we then wish to implement longitudinal studies using this method, which would then allow us to quantify this third element, which would be the disease progression. So my specific objectives for this study were to determine the OCT, intra-observer, and vivo measurement reproducibility in both the proximal and the peripheral airway segments within the same airway path, as well as to determine the scan and scan in vivo measurement reproducibility in both the proximal and peripheral airway segments within the same airway path. Overall, I had 82 subjects that were part of my study, 30 of which were current smokers, 45 of which were ex-smokers, and seven of which have never smoked at all. And on average, we had a lung function of Seth that was 80% predicted. This image shows that through visual inspection, the proximal and peripheral regions of the airway are either determined as being a complete match or a partial match or unmatched. The images on the left represent the scan, which is the first insertion of the probe, and the images on the right represent the rescan, which is the second insertion of the probe. The scan images are also represented by the capital letters, while the rescan images are represented by these lowercase letters. Ultimately, for an airway branch to be deemed as being a complete match, all of its branch points must be identified and matched through visual inspection. If even one branch point is deemed as being a partial match or unmatched, then the entire airway branch is an unmatched or partial match. It's important to remember that the morphology, changes in the morphology are a huge detection of the progression of the disease, which is why a main part of my study was to undergo segmentation of this um, airway. And so we segmented the inner airway wall, the airway lumen, as well as the outer airway wall, which overall gave us a total wall area percent measurement. And all images underwent three rounds of segmentation, and in order to eliminate the visual bias before the rounds of segmentation, all the images were randomized. And from the measurements we calculated, we were able to determine a coefficient of variation for all measurements, as well as to plot a land development analysis. And so it's important to remember that the objective of my study was to determine the measurement reproducibility between the scan and rescan images within the air. And so we calculated the coefficient of variation, which ultimately just measures the amount of variability in relation to the mean population. A low CV value corresponds to a high measurement reproducibility and vice versa. For our matched proximal and peripheral images, we found that the proximal images had a slightly higher CV value, which would correspond to a lower measure of reproducibility um, in relation to the peripheral images, however, not low enough for it to really make a difference. And for the unmatched images, the coefficient of variation values were ultimately the same, meaning that their measure of reproducibility was also basically the same. We then calculated a line open analysis so that we could delve further into the bias and the agreement between the scan and rescan images. On the y-axis, we plotted the difference between the scan and rescan water percent, and on the x-axis, we had the average. And overall, with the bias um, values being represented by the red line, we found that there was an actual bias with a value of 0.7% and a value of 0.4%. And we found similar results for our peripheral images between the matched and unmatched with the bias values actually being the same of 0.4%, so it was overall negligible as well. And although these, both of our results are negligible, it could aid in our detection within longitudinal studies, because it may suggest that within specific and similar regions within the lung, the same disease progression occurs. And so that could be very useful in longitudinal studies. Lastly, we wanted to compare a coefficient of variation value of the technique variability in relation to the intra-observer variability. And we found that for the matched images, the technique variability was significantly higher.
higher than that of the intro observer, which would suggest that it has low measurement of reproducibility in relation, and we think that this may be due to the, in, the second reinsertion of the probe and not going into the same airway branch. However, for the matched images, we found that these scan scan technique CD values weren't significantly higher than the unmatched values. So I would like to conclude with the OCT has a high measurement reproducibility and moderate scan and rescan reproducibility. There's a similar scan and rescan reproducibility for the matched and the unmatched airways. And this may suggest that the heterogeneity of the airway wall structure is relatively small within specific regions of the lung. Lastly, we understood that measurement reproducibility and reinsertion reproducibility may aid in our longitudinal studies evaluating the progression of disease. In the future, we would like to look at generating <laughs> automated tools, um, which would ultimately eliminate observer variability, so automated OCT imaging tools, as well as to invest and in, start to look at longitudinal studies. I would like to thank everyone in my Vancouver lab and the Physician Science <laughs> Training Program. Thank you so much, and I now open the room for any questions. We will now take a small 15-minute break and resume with presentations. 